It's your girl Megan all right so for today it's the last portion of my desserts that I'm making for Thanksgiving that I promised you guys so this is the red velvet cake with cream cheese frosting um, did the dinner rolls already did the sweet potato pies so you know check those out if you haven't seen them already anywho so I'm gonna show you how to do the red velvet cake and then um, we'll do go over the ingredients and do the cream cheese frosting after that. All right, so let's go over the ingredients for the red velvet cake. All right, so you'll need red food coloring, um, at least one ounce or more if you want yours darker or not. You'll need about three fourths of a cup of buttermilk at room temperature. You'll need two cups of sugar. Two eggs at room temperature, two cups of all purpose flour or cake flour. I should have used cake flour. Well, not should have. I could have used cake flour, but I didn't. I grabbed the all purpose flour first. So I'm sifting all of them together anyway, so it really don't matter. All right, so um, half a cup of sour cream. There's a teaspoon of salt, baking soda, and baking powder in here. There is a fourth of a cup of room temperature black coffee, um, two teaspoons of vanilla, five two teaspoons of unsweetened cocoa powder, and two teaspoons of distilled white vinegar. Also you'll need a cup of vegetable oil. And that's it. So this recipe will um, make two nine inch cake pans or one butt pan. Bunt cake. Goodness, I cannot talk today. Alright, so I have my bunt pan. Bunt cake? I have my cake pans over there already. Um, I greased them with some Baker's Joy and lined them with parchment paper. Oven is preheated to, or preheating to 350 degrees. And let's go ahead and get started with our wet ingredients. Okay. Since you, since our cameraman is feeling 50% better. Yeah. He ain't at 100%. He 50%. So now I ain't got to reach over and all that <laughs> stuff. So, alright. So we're going to start with the <laughs> cup of vegetable oil. And your three-fourths. I'm going to stir it a little bit because it's been sitting. Three-four cup of buttermilk. Do y'all know Buttermilk is hard to find now. I'm assuming it's because it's Thanksgiving week, but luckily I had some already. I was just trying to make sure I had enough, but they didn't have none. Oh, that's why you didn't find it? Yeah, no, it was none. It was like me and maybe three more other couples or people that were trying to find it, and we went up and down the whole dairy section, and they had none. Oh. Alright, so, oh, I have my paddle attachment hooked onto this, so I'm just stirring it just to make sure that it gets incorporated because y'all know oil and stuff is hard to mix. Let's drop in one egg. So while that's mixing, turn up a little bit more. I'm gonna put in our coffee. Our vanilla. our vinegar. Oh. Go ahead and mix in the red food coloring as well. 
so you'll use a whole bottle. If you want it redder, then you may want to buy another one. Now we're going to sift in all of our dry ingredients. So, we'll start with flour. <laughs> and then your sugar. And your salt, baking powder, and baking soda. All the good ones, there. All the good. And we just sift it. So once I get this sifted and everything, then we'll be back. All right. So now we're gonna do half of the mixture. See. Mm-hmm. I'm out here, I'm figuring it out. I'm like, oh, This isn't as thick as some cake batters will be because one red velvet cake tends to be thick and dry anyway. So I really wanted to make sure that it's not like you don't have to have milk when you eating it because it's so thick, you know what I mean? Alright, so let's add the rest of this. We're almost done with this. It just has to mix. And then we add the sour cream and then we'll put it in our pans and we're ready to bake. Incorporate it. Time to scrape it down one more time before we add the sour cream because you don't want streaks of white in a red cake. Well, she got a stripe cake. What's a stripe cake? Mm -hmm. A marble cake? Yeah. Hush, baby. <laughs> add in our sour cream. Again, it's room temperature also. As with everything when you're baking, try to make sure you idea. 
try to make sure it's all room temperature. Okay. And we're mixing again. Black peppermint. That's what it looks like. <laughs> And you want to mix it until you there are no more visible white streaks. So a little bit of sour cream right there. And I know this one didn't have the last cup wasn't full. <laughs> Change of the dough like you smell the coffee in this cake. No, I don't. I'm too busy laughing at chance of jumping on that dough ready to come in. Check with me. I'm over this. <laughs> Open the door. Okay. All right. So they're gonna go in the oven. Like I said, I'm 350. They're gonna cook for about 20, 25 minutes, just depending on your oven. But you'll know when they're done, you stick a toothpick in the middle. If it comes out clean with no batter, then you're good to go. So once these go in the oven and out, then I'll start with the icing and I'll be back. Guys, right, so our cakes have been in the oven. They actually cooked because I didn't have the convection part on, um, just normal oven temp. So it actually cooked for about 30 minutes. And um, it's completely cool now. They're chilling over there on the cooling rack. We'll bring them over here in just a second. But I wanted to go ahead and show you the cream cheese frosting, which is really easy. There's only like three ingredients, four ingredients, baby. Um, so we have vanilla extract, um, powdered sugar. I think there's like one and a half cups of powdered sugar. Um, and we have one stick of softened room temperature butter and 16 ounces of room temperature cream cheese. And that's it. So, get my, this in here so that it can cream together. Scrape down and off of your beater. Beat it. Uh -huh. Somebody feeling better. I'm trying. Uh uh, why you sound like that? I'm struggling for real. <laughs> All right. So, I'm going to add in about two teaspoons. Vanilla extract. Oh, get a little. Oh, got another one over there. 
and add in your powdered sugar. All over. Yeah, I should have sifted it, but I did. off low or you're going to get a cloud of smoke. Once all of the powdered sugar has like mixed in with the cream cheese and the butter, then you can speed it up so that it can actually whisk and get some air to it. the last minute because that's going to be enough cream cheese icing but I wanted to make sure that I had enough to layer it because you know how you make a cake and you be trying to save the icing to make sure that it covers it and like every piece has enough so I'm going to add in some going to make some whipped cream to go to it so this out. That was so good. Put the icing in this bowl. And what I have over here is about one and three fourth cup of heavy whipping cream. So I'm gonna go rinse this out, make sure that there's no butter and cream cheese and stuff in it. And then I'll come back as it's whipping and I wanna whip it until it forms stiff, stiff peaks. And then at that point, I'm gonna fold that into the whip, the cream cheese icing to make it strong enough so that it you'll see <laughs> so i'll be back all right y'all so i just whipped up like i said it was about a cup one and one third one fourth cup of heavy whipping cream so i just did that so that i'm sure well i want to be sure that this is enough icing to cover the cakes and make sure that everything is covered and there's a nice coating but just to be on the safe side I wanted to do this and there you are just like you're making meringue but instead of egg whites I just used heavy whipping cream so just like whipped cream by the store now just gonna take it and fold it in two so fold it into your cream cheese icing Now, 
it's more like a, a mousse, so to speak. So it's not like super thick and it still has that tanginess of the cream cheese, but it's fluffy. It's hard to describe it, but for my bakers out there, y'all know what I'm talking about. Or the wannabe bakers <laughs> like me. <laughs> and you gotta start somewhere. Right. But you wanna fold it in. Be sure that it's even and well distributed. So, like I said, I put the little pieces of wax paper on it just so that once I'm done icing it, I can slide it off and it won't be any um, icing, you know, all nasty looking and stuff if I was putting it directly on the serving tray. But I have it on my turntable here. So, like I said, I flipped it over. This is like the nicer side that just came out. This is the bottom actually. Um, not nicer side, but it's the bottom. And that just came off from where the um, parchment paper came off of. But if you squeeze it, it's really moist and dense. Um, try not to get no crumbs anywhere. But anyway, so let's get to this icing so I can put this in the fridge. <laughs> so I'm going to do a crumb coat on that. For those of you guys that don't know what a crumb coat is, it's basically where you put a layer of icing, thin layer of icing on it, and then you pop it in the refrigerator for about 10 minutes so that it can harden up and that way the crumbs won't get on the outside layer of your icing so that it looks all nice and neat. So probably won't be talking much during this because it's pretty simple but you just put a nice size dollop. If it falls out on the edge then that's fine because that's what you want. Said, that's just your crumb coat not a whole whole lot of icing but you wanted enough to seal in the crumb so put this in the fridge for about 20 minutes and then we'll be back to finish up the rest and then that's it
figure out which part was on top. A little off centered on the board but it's gonna do all right y'all so there you have it i wish i could cut it but since we're serving it with our friends for thanksgiving i can't ruin it but there you have it it's your two layer red velvet cake all right guys hope you guys enjoyed this video along with the other two for this year's thanksgiving um menu slash video slash whatever <laughs> um but and i hope you guys forgive us for no not having meal prep for two weeks in a row but that's what happens so anyway um thanks again for watching if we don't talk to you guys again before thanksgiving happy thanksgiving from the nelsons and thanks for watching be sure to give us a big thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't, and share this video on all of your social media however you see fit. Alright guys, bye! Hey family, thanks, thanks for watching. watching. Please be sure to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Also, check out our latest video and be sure to subscribe. Bye, bye guys! guys.